and welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a computer science student at the University of Virginia. And in fact, as part of the computer science degree, you have to take some science electives. And this is going to be not a whole lot from Geology 102, uh, but kind of like a first step towards geology, or a second step. I guess we kind of talked a little bit about continental drift. Uh, in the Thales of Miletus video, uh, but it was basically a really outdated version of that anyway, so this is just the first kind of idea that you could probably get if you completely ignored everything else in a geology class, especially if you're a University of Regina student. If you're from another city, this may not be quite as useful of a lesson to you, uh, but especially in places like Regina, or maybe in places like India or China, where new cities are being planned and developed all the time, and they may have similar uh, geological foundations to Regina, or at least, you know, something close enough that this lesson might be applicable. So, uh, we have underneath Regina, and uh, people, if you're listening and you, you know, have evidence otherwise, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but there's basically two types of, uh, I guess, soil formations or, or sort of material under the city, uh, and there's this kind of sand or silt on kind of one side, I can't remember if it's the north or not, I'm pretty sure it's the north side. Uh, and then on the other side, there's this kind of clay uh, area. So the, the, the city itself is kind of built on this kind of swampy area. Uh, there's a little bit of topsoil underneath, topsoil being stuff that you can kind of grow wheat or, or grain or canola or something like that under. But underneath that, if you dig far enough, you kind of get into these other materials. And then somewhere under that, uh, there are what are called aquifers, or basically large collections of water uh, underneath the ground, uh, that if, if you dig a well deep enough, kind of puncture uh, part of the land here, you can actually draw water from and fill into your well, and then everyone's happy because you get some water from the well, uh, and so on and so forth. And then way deep under that uh, is kind of another kind of layer of uh, material or clay, and then sand over here, uh, and then a larger, much larger aquifer that spans much of the province of Saskatchewan. I'm not sure if it's the same one that Saskatoon has, but it would not surprise me. I think it, I think it goes all the way up to Saskatoon. Uh, and so this is kind of a, a large collection of water. I, I believe uh, these two aquifers don't charge very quickly. I think it's only like 38 centimeters per year or something like that. So you only have so much water that you can draw from them. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you can draw from them. You can drink from them with fairly little treatment. Uh, they're not too salty, etc. And so the question is, uh, if you were to put a garbage dump, uh, where would you put it? Because, I mean, cities like Regina, uh, they're kind of wasteful, very few people recycle, and even the people who could recycle are kind of too lazy to do it. Uh, I mean, I've thrown out things myself, uh, but there is garbage that it gets produced, uh, whether it should be recycled or not, and so we end up putting a garbage dump, a big pile of it somewhere in the city. And uh, so the question is, where do we put it? And there is an important uh, kind of lesson in that Regina itself has uh, kind of shown the world because you can either put it on the side with clay or you can put it on the side with sand. And what happens if you put it on the side with clay? Let's put a little garbage up here. Is uh, either through liquids in the garbage dump or when rain happens, uh, kind of water gets into the dump and then it kind of seeps into the topsoil. And there are a lot of bad things in that water that leachate, uh, that uh, kind of run off from the dump. You have biologic um, or biological material, so rotting food, kind of the, the kind of toxic stuff coming off of run, rotting food, the bacteria, uh, and all you know, fungus, uh, all, all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't want to eat, for example. Uh, that kind of goes right into the soil. I mean, it's, it's slowly decomposing and being turned into you know, kind of more basic materials as it goes, uh, but if it comes right off the dump, it, it is uh, not exactly the greatest stuff to be putting in the topsoil that you want to you know, grow food on, but thankfully we're not growing food on that topsoil. For the most part, it's kind of nearby the dump. Uh, there's kind of an industrial area there, so it's not a huge big deal. And, uh, but there's also other stuff, like there's people who throw out their computer equipment, and uh, you know, if you've taken apart computers that are teared out Tuesday or something like that, you'll have seen that there's various kind of plastics and, you know, weird capacitor material and all, all sorts of things that, in principle, you could recycle. In, in principle, uh, you can understand what it is, but uh, regardless, it's, a, it's just e-waste in general. Uh, batteries, uh, not all batteries get recycled. You get a lot of acids from batteries. You get a lot of kind of metals, uh, heavy metals, 
uh, even radioactive stuff. Uh, it's not supposed to go in the dump, but it does. And so you end up getting radioactive stuff, uh, stuff from the hospital that, again, isn't supposed to go in the dump, but sometimes it does. So you get, like, biological, chemical, nuclear, uh, all, all sorts of bad stuff uh, gets into this leachate. And then you would not want to drink this, you wouldn't want to eat this, but it's kind of contained in this kind of little area. And then the question is, what happens after that? And so if you put the garbage dump above a clay area, that clay has very uh, kind of low, uh, or uh, it's a low permeability to water, so water doesn't flow through it very well. Well, there's a little bit of flow through that water, but it, it happens more or less in the geological time frame. So in, a, in geology, ge geological time frames happen to be like millions of years or billions of years even, and it's how long it'll take for water to get kind of into and spread around and kind of plume out uh, inside of this kind of soil formation. So it would make sense to put it here rather than in the sand, because if you put it on top of the sand, Sand has a very, uh, I think, high permeability. I think it's about high, that's where the water flows through a lot. But yeah, if you've you ever taken a handful of sand and put water in it, you'll notice the water kind of seeps through the sand very easily. And that's exactly what happens if you were to put a garbage dump on this sand. And so, you know, you get some cloud, get some rain on it, it leaches into the topsoil, and then from there it leaches into the sand, and then from there it leaches into the you know, sand below it and then kind of goes all the way down. And the problem is, uh, we really don't want to mess with our aquifers because aquifers are relatively permanent uh, on geological time frames. They are not permanent, they do refresh themselves, but on human time frames, uh, you really only get kind of one chance to use it. And so, you, uh, again, you can, if, if you use the water from it, you can get a little bit of water every year, you know, put back into it. But if you put stuff into it, it's a lot harder to, you know, pull the material out. And so if you accidentally put leachate into your aquifer, that aquifer starts to no longer be usable by humankind again for the history of humankind, unless we take some really, really extreme um, uh, like it's activity to kind of dredge out the entire city going, you know, tens of meters or hundreds of meters down and then kind of repacking it with some kind of material that you know, we design, uh, which is well beyond any construction that has ever happened in the prairies, for sure, uh, except for possibly the tar sands. Uh, but at least in the case of the tar sands, you can use the output of the tar sands to power the process of digging it out. Uh, so whereas this is just, I mean, water, I guess you can feed the, the <laughs> workers with water, but you won't have the water to feed them with because the water will be toxic. Uh, getting to the point where you destroy your aquifer by putting heavy metals and weird other stuff into it. And so the question is, do you put the garbage dump on the side of the clay where the water will not seep into the aquifer with leachate in it, or do you put it on the uh, side of the city with the sand and the silt and the stuff that really takes the water very easily? And of course the, the answer should be, put it on the side with the sand. And unfortunately the answer is, or the answer that you know, going back to the is hot video, uh, and the difference between what we should be doing and what we are in fact doing, what we are in fact doing in Regina, is we put the garbage dump right on top of the sand. And in fact, we've already started to see uh, in the first layer of aquifer, plumes of leachate going into the aquifer. So already, to, you know, today and 10 years ago even, uh, we were starting to see the first signs that this aquifer would no longer be usable within our lifetime. And this has been a good couple of years, so maybe things have changed. May, I, I do know they've taken steps on the, the kind of topsoil level to kind of um, drain away some of the leachate and to process it at the top, uh, but I don't think that there's much they're going to be able to do to save this aquifer. Uh, and so the only thing we could do is we could move this dump or at least stop putting stuff there and not expanding this dump so that we can put more stuff onto it. And the unfortunate part is, is there's a lot of nimbyism, not in my backyard, uh, kind of political philosophy in Regina where people have a really strong political uh, will to keep garbage dumps out of their area. So even if you could put a garbage dump on the rich each east side, where there's nice uh, soil foundations where it won't leach into the aquifer and poison everyone, uh, the people on that side have money and power, and so they're not willing to put it there, uh, or not letting the city hall to put it there. And unfortunately, there isn't as much understanding of this problem in the city, because not everyone has taken the very first geology class, 
Uh, and it, as you kind of might imagine, anyone who wants to put this into the high school school uh, system as, as part of the curriculum will run into political battles because the B-siders or wherever this you know would be other than where it currently is will fight tooth and nail to keep people from you know, figuring out that hey we're poisoning ourselves and uh, we should not live here if we can continue to poison ourselves. Uh, and the worst part is is that it does seem to be possible that if we can get as far as this far, then the main aquifer for much of Saskatchewan will be affected. Uh, and it's just a matter of time at this point before uh, we kind of ruin this main aquifer for much of the province, meaning the bread basket of Saskatchewan will be completely screwed uh, if that happens. Uh, so that, that might take a couple of years. We may uh, have time left to prevent this sort of thing from happening by very uh, technical and political means. Uh, I don't think that that's actually happened yet, but there is movement in that direction. And so the important thing, again, is that if you're faced with city design or city planning, and you're thinking about putting some waste pile somewhere that's going to potentially leach into the soil, the first thing you want to do is you want to hire a geologist. You don't want to talk to me about this sort of thing. I mean, I can point out that this is a you know potential problem or that you know, these plumes exist already. Uh, but I'm just some guy who happened to be taught in one class. My teaching may not even be right. Maybe I've got all this wrong and that, you know, my reading of the, you know, document that the city of Regina re released is not thorough enough, enough or something like that. But you want to talk to a geologist. And better yet, get two geologists. Get, like, a second opinion on this. And don't just go to, like, you know, geologists that may be compromised by oil, oil companies or something like that. Make sure you get, like, a decent opinion from someone who's skilled in the science of geology to tell you where and where you sh or where you should and where you should not put your garbage dump. Better yet, recycle your garbage and you know, have a close cycle so that you don't even have waste like this. But regardless of how you do it, make sure that if there's a you know source for leachate anywhere in your city uh, that doesn't hit this aquifer or, or your equivalent aquifer, because humankind only has so many aquifers to screw up. And the ones in California are under a lot of stress right now. The one under Phoenix is under a lot of stress right now. The ones in China, there's a couple that are under a lot of stress right now. Some in the Middle East, I think, are under a, lo a lot of stress right now. And that's just from overuse. That's not even from poisoning it. There are places in India, there are places in Russia, and of course, you know, this one, uh, that the stuff we're putting into it is going to be breaking it. I think there's also in the northeastern U.S. there's a small aquifer that is under the same kind of situation where they're putting heavy metals into it. But uh, either way, you know, we, we if these are really valuable things. This is much, much more valuable than a similar uh, supply of oil, uh, if you can imagine that, because at least with this, you can survive. Uh, you can drink water. Water is one of the, you know, most important, you know, top of the Maslow hierarchy almost. It's one of the most important things that you can have access to. Uh, and so, if you uh, kill your water supply, you are starting to you know, really put pressure in the water distribution system. And uh, you know, we're, we're not at the point where people are dying yet uh, because of this, but uh, this is a really, really serious thing that we have to not break. Uh, and it does recharge itself. It, it's a renewable resource if we treat it properly. Uh, and unfortunately, in Regina, we're not treating it properly. Uh, and again, due to political will, all the way from the 70s and the 90s into the current, probably, um, people are preventing this problem from being solved, uh, but now you don't have an excuse. You know about this problem. Uh, you know that the city is going to be under water stress if we continue our current behavior. Uh, and so start, you know, kicking out the people that you're electing unless they deal with this problem. Because in the long term, you're going to suffer for it if you stay in the city. Unless you're like me, in which case you just leave because you can see that this problem is getting solved in our lifetime. Uh, and, you know, you kind of give up on it. You can absolutely do that. But even if you do that, uh, make sure you go far away because this aquifer, if it gets screwed up, you know, the whole, uh, good part of the province is screwed. So, uh, uh, as usual, uh, if you have any questions about uh, you know, this particular uh, problem, uh, feel free to uh, ask anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, and if you uh, have any Bitcoin that you'd like to uh, donate to support this video series, uh, and, or if you, you know, send enough maybe to solve this problem, uh, although that would be a lot of Bitcoin, uh, feel free to send them and the, at the Bitcoin address where this uh, video is posted. And uh, as usual, hopefully you're enjoying the series. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, so please uh, go check them out. I'll, this is the 
the first one on this particular topic, but most of the others have to do with something a little bit closer to computer science itself. So uh, uh, go enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.